As the movie begins, a menacing van is seen parked in a roadway that resembles a tunnel. Inside the van, we are introduced to a man named Kuro, who's peeping through the side view mirror, and in its reflection, a young couple, Aki and Kazuo, are seen strolling together. As they approach closer, Kuro emerges from the van and uses a hammer to strike them in the head, instantly rendering them unconscious. When they awaken and come to their senses, they discover that they are bound to an iron board with a gag. Kuro then proceeds to ask Kazuo if he wants to go first as he turns his face to him. When he doesn't respond, the man takes out a screwdriver-like tool and slides it through the gag's hole and slashes the unfortunate man's tongue. He proceeds to stab Kazuo's abdomen with the same tool while he was bleeding. Aki begs him to stop as she witnesses Kazuo, and when Kuro asks her if she wants him to spare the guy, she responds in the affirmative, but to his astonishment, she declines when he asks if she would die for him. A brief flashback shows us what happened before this occurs. As Kazuo and Aki are out on a date, Kazuo eventually expresses his affection for Aki and asks her out after a few interactions. Even though she likes Kazuo, Aki responds that maybe they should get to know each other a little better, and Kazuo agrees. And as the pair were heading home down the tunnel, we see the terrible incident that brought Aki and Kazuo to this sadistic madman's room. Meanwhile, the abductor is shown enjoying cake and listening to classical music in the midst of all the mayhem. He questions Kazuo about how frequently he slept with Aki, to which they both give a negative response. When Kuro learns this, he goes around and asks the couple if they like each other. In addition, he asks Kazuo if he's willing to sacrifice his life in order to save his crush. And moving on, the man says that although they will both die, there, there is a possibility for them to survive. He demands that they sexually arouse him, promising to set them free if they can successfully arouse him with their will to live. And strangely, Kuro tends to Kazuo's abdominal wound in order to keep him alive and prevent his death, because he wants the guy to turn him on. However, a few moments later, Kuro reverts to his vicious nature again, and with each of them watching, the other sexually assaults both of them. One by one, he takes the gag out of their mouths and gives them water, when he forces Aki to utter the phrase, please kill me while sexually abusing her, he once again exposes his terrible nature. And then he chloroforms them and knocks them unconscious again. After some time, they are finally roused by having something else forced up their nostrils. They discover themselves in a stretcher while still restrained and gagged, and the madman is revealed to be armed with a massive chainsaw, donning a surgical gown. And with the same chainsaw, he approaches Kazuo and grimly chops off all of his fingers except the thumb. The room is then filled with the agonizing screams of Kazuo and the terrified screams of Aki. And then this dude gathers up the fingers and he makes a necklace out of them. The necklace is then placed around Aki's neck as he continues on. Kuro starts telling her that it's a gift from Kazuo and she ought to give him a gift as well. Aki's fearful tremblance increases as she hears the chainsaw buzzing and in a similar way to Kazuo, he too chops off her fingers. Kuro becomes enraged when she pleads with him to stop, so he decides to punish her even more. He brings out a pair of scissors and warns her not to move should he make a severe cut. He then proceeds to amputate one of her arms and both her nipples leaving her unresponsive. After a little while, Aki wakes and becomes horrified upon seeing her dismembered hands and arms. Before moving to Kazuo, Kuro notices Aki's labored breathing and turns to face her, implying that he is already attended to her wounds. He drapes Kazuo with a necklace made of Aki's severed fingers and nipples, just like he did with Aki. He once again asked if he would die for Aki before making a very stark warning. Kuro continues by adding that he would torture Kazuo first and then he would hack him into pieces before killing him. Kuro adds that Aki is next in line if Kazuo is unable to endure the torment. However, if he is courageous and fights through everything, he'll spare her and Kazuo agrees to this. Furthermore, Kuro describes how Kazuo's scrotum will be painfully punctured by nails, but if he surrenders, he'll stop torturing him right away and go to Aki. He reminds Kazuo that human beings are frail, therefore it's acceptable if he decides to quit despite his determination, saying, to surrender is not a disgrace. Kazuo writhes in agony as he proceeds to nail his scrotum. He continues by popping out Kazuo's right eye and hacking off his penis. Furthermore, he holds Kazuo's mutilated penis in his hand and sighs as he relishes the intense sexual stimulation. And finally, Kuro informs them that they have won and they are now free to live. Kazuo and Aki discover that they've been transferred to a clean and more modern 
and sophisticated room that resembles a hospital. When Kazuo and Aki finally wake up, they gaze upon each other, pleased that they're still alive and that their suffering wasn't just in vain. And as they are talking, Kuro walks in and inquires about their well-being, and since the couple are too feeble, Kuro advises them to stay there until they heal. He continues by thanking them for the excitement and thrill that they have provided him with. And much to the couple's dismay, Kuro has them bound and shackled in their beds. And when questioned why he still has them tied up, he tells them that it's because he needs them to rest, and he doesn't really want them moving around and that would be bad for them. And Aki and Kazuo promise to support each other no matter what and that they'll stick together and somehow manage to get out of this and better things will come. And Kuro apparently is a doctor. He's some kind of really rich surgeon and he tells them that he's actually gonna surrender himself to the authorities because what he really wanted was just to feel really aroused and excited and he's already done that. And he also tells them that he'll give them all of his money as compensation for all the torment and anguish that he's put them through. He also advises that they take their medications in hopes that they will get better and be set free and they comply. A few hours later though, the couple wakes up shackled to the same iron board in the same cellar as before and their hopes just die. The doctor orders them to take part in one ultimate test of love and their will to live. The doctor explains that he will perform a precise cut to remove the rectum and tie the intestines onto a hook next to Kazuo. He clarifies that in order to save Aki, Kazuo must approach her while his guts are still fastened to the hook and cut her ropes with scissors. In the space between the two iron planks, he places a pair of scissors. He must, however, cut his intestines if needed in order to reach her. And since the intestines can only be extended so far, the doctor offers to release Aki if Kazuo is able to complete it. He does not, however, downplay the possibility that Kazuo would perish in the process, but not having any other options, Kazuo is forced to comply. Next, Kazuo is ordered by Kuro to make him feel sexually aroused. But for a sadistic psychopath like him, torture continues to be a source of sexual gratification. Then he begins to cut an incision and remove Kazuo's intestines, and consequently, Kazuo vomits and nearly loses consciousness, but he persists and he keeps going. He cuts the ropes after falling on Aki's feet, they realize that there's a metal wire underneath the ropes, and when he tries to do the same with those, the wires were impossible to cut with the poor man's remaining energy, and Kazuo has lost a lot of blood at this point, and so he surrenders. And then Kuro demands that Aki exhibit her will to live once again. She spits on his face many times before he slapped her and then she starts talking about his mama. She tells him that she knew his mom and that she's some kind of prostitute in Okuba and that he shares this sick fetish with his mom. And she calls him a lot of names and then she expresses her pity for him. And then she tells him that he has no friends or lovers because he, like his mother, smells really, really bad. And now infuriated, Kuro chops off her head, which drops onto his neck. And as their final blow, Aki chomps Kuro's neck with all her power. And while he yells in agony, Kazuo, who had only fallen unconscious, stabs him in the foot with the scissors. And with this, the couple die facing each other. And meanwhile, Kuro, who is still alive, respectfully entombs the couple side by side in accordance with Japanese custom. As a reminder of their love, he places the scissors on their graves before being pictured in his van once more. Kuro is seen limping out of the woods where he buried Kazuo and Aki. He douses himself in perfume to conceal the putrid stench. And just then, a girl is seen strolling past his van and Kuro is seen grinning while pulling out his hammer to pursue his next victim. I can't believe he doesn't die. Ugh. God. Anyways, this is how the movie ends. Please leave a like, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel. I will see you guys on the next recap. Bye.